Welcome to the fifth section, Deploying the Web API. In this video, we will take a look at how we can deploy our Web API to Azure with Visual Studio 2017. In the upcoming demo, we will prepare our deployment to Azure a bit. So first, we have to add some NuGet packages again. Then, we have to add the Entity Framework migrations again. After that, we will create a published profile to deploy our Web API to Azure. And in the last step, we will publish our API to Azure with Visual Studio. Let's go straight to the code. In our packed web application, the first thing we have to do is installing some NuGet packages. Therefore, we will browse for Microsoft Entity Framework Core. We're installing it explicitly because we need a specific version at the time we are recording this course. So if you click on it, we select the version 111 to install. Once we're finished, we have to install a specific version of Microsoft Entity Framework Core.SQL Server. I know we previously installed that, but I encountered errors while deploying to Azure with this version we installed previously. So for this video, we will install the version 1.1.1. And last but not least, we will install the Microsoft Entity Framework Core tools to have everything on board. Here, please select the version 1.1.0. So when this is installed, we can take a look at this csproj file. And here you can see again the versions which we are deploying to Azure with. Entity Framework Core 1.1.1, Entity Framework Core SQL Server 1.1.1 and Entity Framework Core Tools 1.1.0. At the time of recording, these were the versions which are playing very nicely with our ASP.NET Core web app. The next thing to do is adding some migrations. We already did that, so we can open up the Package Manager console and like we did in the previous video, we can do an add migration, followed by the name. So you can see in the background, the migration was added and we have our migration folder with the migration files. So now we can do a right click on our project and select Publish in the menu. After that, you will see some deployment options. We will take the Microsoft Azure App Service and create a new. Click Publish. After that, you will see some options to fill in. The first is the web app name. We can leave it like that. Then you can choose your subscription you have on Azure. Then you have to see which resource group you want to have and you can choose the app service plan. For a demo, we will add a new app service plan. As this is only a demo, we will take the free one here. Clicking OK. Then you can take a look at the services tab. As we have a database which we target over Entity Framework Core. As an SQL Server, we will create a new one. Then we will take an administrator username and we will choose an administrator password. Clicking OK. Clicking OK again. Then you can see like a summary of what we are planning to publish. The first one is our packed web app plan. This is the app service plan our application will run on. Then we have the DB server and your SQL database. Now you can click create. Visual Studio will now publish our API to Azure and scaffold everything for us. If the deployment is ready, you can see that it opens up the browser and browses to the web app. In this case, we can see our HTML page. It works. Now we can show up the Swagger page. Here you can see our endpoints, customers and customers too. Let's try it out. Let's try get all customers, setting the text to application JSON and just try it out. And here you can see we're getting our data. So even our Z service is running. Let's try add a new customer, sending a post request, JSON, try it out. And you can see that we have an ID and our customer was added. Let's copy this link here and try it from Postman. In Postman, you can simply paste the URI and just hit the get request. And then you can see we're getting back our data with our new added customer. Hello there. So this is how you can deploy your web app to Azure. In the packed web app, you now can see under properties, a folder which is called publish profiles. Here you can see the published profiles which were added through Visual Studio so that you can easily redeploy. 
Let's change something on our code. Now we can simply do a right click on the project and select publish again. We already have the publish profile, but we can go through the settings. Here we can click validate connection and under settings you can see when we open up the databases tab that it should use this connection string at runtime and this is the connection string we added with the user ID and the password which is used to connect to the database. So you can check this one here to make sure it uses that when the app is running on Azure. You can save that and simply hit publish again. You can see the it works again because the browser pops up automatically. If we now browse to Swagger again. And here you can see my second web API. Now let's log into Azure and see our web app and some detailed information about it. If you log into Azure, the first thing you can see is your dashboard. You can customize it as you want. If you click on all resources on the left hand side, you can filter your web apps. You can filter all your resources you got running on Azure. Now let's filter by packed. Here you can see all the resources which are connected with our packed web app. Visual Studio did everything for us and scaffolded all the four resources for us. Here we see the service plan, the SQL database, the SQL server itself and the app service. Let's click on the app service to see some more detailed information. Here you can stop or restart the web app, you can delete it, you can download the published profile or you can reset the published profile if you want. Then you got some essential information about it like the FTP deployment username or the URL. When we scroll down you can see some graphic information about the HTTP 500 requests, data in, data out, requests, response time and stuff like that. I would recommend you to go through all the settings but I would like to point out the application settings here under settings. If you click on it you get some detailed information what .NET framework is running there. Maybe you want to switch WebSockets on if you're using SignalR. Or you can customize some app settings or the connection strings for your web app. You got a lot of things to configure in this Azure portal here. So I would recommend you to really dive into it and just take a look. So this is how you can deploy your web app from Visual Studio 2017 to Azure. Now let's summarize this video. So in this video we saw how we can deploy our ASP.NET Core web app to Azure. We saw how we can add the NuGet packages and here you gotta pay attention to the versions that they are compatible with Azure and between each other. Then we added migrations from Entity Framework Core. Then we did a right click and publish to Azure with Visual Studio. And we took a sneak peek at the Azure portal just to see how our web app is going.